So yeah, I mean, at $150, it's hard to beat a machine like this. We've got Cyberpunk 2077 here running at 74 FPS on average at 1080p. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a $150 Steam machine that can actually play games at 1080p. Now this is totally possible to build. And for the operating system, we're going to be using SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS. And with a $150 price point, I do think it would be well worth putting something like this together. And keep in mind, if you're not into Linux, you could always install Windows on this machine. So what we've got here is a used Dell Optiplex 7020. There's several different other models that you can pick up. I would suggest a tower, given that we need a GPU to really game on it. Of course, you could always go with the small form factor unit, but you're going to be really limited on finding a GPU that's going to put out enough power for the price we're working with on this whole setup here. This was $67 shipped with 8GB of RAM and a 1TB Western Digital Blue Drive. Now for this, I do want to upgrade the RAM. I want at least 16 gigs of RAM here, but uh, when it comes to that CPU and you're looking around for these, I would go with an i7 variant like the 4770, but you can always pick up an i5 variant for probably cheaper. The 4590 is very prevalent on eBay and it should offer some decent performance, but we've got a higher clock here on this 4790. The power supply that comes included is 290 watts. Now there should be plenty for the CPU, motherboard, and the GPU we're going to be adding here but you can always pick up an adapter to add just basically any kind of ATX power supply to these. And uh, like I mentioned, this unit did come with eight gigs of RAM. I also picked up another eight gigs, just two four gig sticks. It utilizes DDR3, so it's dirt cheap on eBay, about $17 for this. And when it comes to the GPU, since I'm running Linux, I personally wanted to use a Radeon card and I would highly suggest it. I opted to get the RX 580. This is a four gigabyte variant and they're going for around $65 right now. So uh, to add power to this, we definitely needed some type of adapter because we're using the stock Dell power supply. I just went with the uh, SATA to six pin power adapter. Under full load, this GPU is pulling around 95 watts and that's about the max that I've seen so far in Linux. And it's just gonna plug into the extra two SATA adapters that we have here in this Optiplex. Real quick, head over to eBay, just give you a look here. Tons of these listed. You can also go with like a 9020. I just went with a 7020 given the price here. As you can see, they range anywhere from around $50 on up there to around $100. I wouldn't pay more than $70, and at $70, it should have about 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte drive. Checking out GPU prices on that RX 580, pretty cheap right now. I know it's not a super high-end card, but it will get you by with 1080p gaming in Linux. And finally, a little bit of extra RAM. Sometimes you can pick up these Optiplexes with 16, basically fully loaded, but uh, just going through here, DDR3 is really cheap. So in total, I've got $157 into this. That's with the tower, the GPU, the RAM, and the six pin power adapter. You can pick them up for around $8 on Amazon. I'll leave links to everything in the description. Another good upgrade would be an SSD, but uh, we're gonna stick with that drive that it came with. And I'm gonna be installing SteamOS 3. For this, we're gonna be using Holo ISO. Basically, they've taken the Steam Deck recovery image, reworked it so we can install it on different systems. We're gonna have the same interface as the Steam Deck. It's also got a desktop interface in case you wanna use it as a real computer. And in the end, this is gonna be offering a lot more performance than the Steam Deck, but you gotta keep in mind, I mean, this isn't portable. I completely understand that kind of the appeal behind the Steam Deck is portability, but I know a lot of people that have them that really never go anywhere. They just kind of sit on their couch and play the Steam Deck. I'm just gonna add this adapter, going with uh, two of these SATAs. Now, uh, if you ever burn this power supply up, you could always replace it really cheap, but I would recommend just getting a cheap ATX power supply and uh, the adapter. This uses a proprietary connector to this Dell motherboard, but they do sell them on Amazon. That way, you'll never have to worry about a PSU again. All right. Not bad. I've been up and running for a little while. I did want to get some games installed. I'll tell you, you know, caching the shaders here on this uh, mechanical drive does take a little bit of time. An SSD would be really nice, but we definitely wanted to keep the price down. And in a pinch, you can definitely get by with this. And by the way, Decky Loader does work here along with CSS Loader, so we can change the theme. It definitely looks a little different from the Steam Deck, and you can install this on the Steam Deck also. Personally, I like this OutRun one. Gives us some of that pink and blue, but it's been working really well, much better than I thought it would. We have access to everything that we do on the Steam Deck here. Now keep in mind, we don't have Wi-Fi with this older machine, but you could use an adapter. I'm using Ethernet. And for my controller, I've got that uh, Steam controller. There's one issue I've run into with uh, Forza Horizon 5. 
It starts up in GamePad UI, the interface we're working with right now, but it's a black screen, so I actually have to go to desktop mode to play it. I've looked online, I cannot find a fix for it. This is actually happening on my real Steam Deck also. But I'm super excited to show you how this thing performs. Uh, we'll go with Cyberpunk 2077. When you start these games up for the first time, they're only going to run at 720p, unless you go to the settings, properties, and we can change the output resolution or the default resolution. I've gone to 1080 with everything we're gonna be testing here. We'll get right into it. So I've been really trying my hardest to use this Steam controller. Um, I've had it for a couple years actually. Never really got the hang of it. With this trackpad, it's definitely a bit hard. I'm so used to using two analog sticks. For me, it's just really hard to get used to. I'm not a huge fan of trackpads in the first place, but uh, I mean, I can definitely play some games with it. But what we've got going on here is Cyberpunk 2077 1080p with a low medium mix. We've got FSR set to balance, and we're getting an average of around 74 FPS. Kind of surprised that it's running this well. I figured with this one we'd have to go down to low, maybe a 900p, but at 1080 we're getting great performance. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything, and I'm going to test some more games. Just moving over to my game capture, wanted to test out uh, OG Skyrim here at 1440p high. Didn't think we'd have an issue with it, looking pretty good, haven't seen any kind of dips, and uh, this was kind of the default that it went to, that high setting. We may be able to go up to Ultra with this, but uh, we've only got 4 gigs of VRAM with that RX 580. It's an older game, I know, but it's still a lot of fun to play. Witcher 3, 1080p, medium settings, we're getting around 76 FPS. I thought it would be a bit more given the age, but we are using the updated version, which uh, does have all of the extra FSR features and things like that. We could get a lot more out of it by turning FSR on for sure. Project Cars 3, and you know I was originally going to test out Forza 5, but I have to move over to desktop mode, which doesn't leave me with that performance overlay, so I figured I'd just show this off. We're at high settings, 1080p, getting an average of around 123 FPS. Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium settings, looking great here, and I did kind of want to test this out at high, but unfortunately, again, we've only got 4 gigs of VRAM, which just gives me that warning. Medium still looks great here, and we don't have any kind of resolution scale going. If you needed to use it, you can in Linux, but this is a very well-optimized game. This one was pretty impressive. We've got Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p original settings, and FSR set to balanced. I figured we'd need performance on this, given we're working with that older RX 580, but uh, we're well over 60 FPS. We're getting an average of 78 FPS with this game, and you know, in those enclosed areas, in the canyons and things like that, it will jump up to around 100. River, we'll find a herd of machines, and I will teach you how to hunt. God of War, 1080p, original settings, FSR set to balance, 73 FPS. For a $150 machine, this is not bad at all. We're running these games at 1080p with basically no issue at all. Obviously, it's not the prettiest setup in the world, but uh, for the price, I do think it would be well worth putting something like this together, and I would highly recommend picking one up that has a CPU with extra threads. I've done a lot of testing with uh, Linux and these uh, older Intel CPUs. Really does seem like those extra threads help out quite a lot. So I would recommend something like an i7-4770. You can also pick up the 4790, which is going to be your best bet when it comes to these 4th gen Intel CPUs, but you could always get by with that i5-4590, which are all over the place on eBay. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, do you think it's worth $150 putting something like this together? Of course, we've got Linux installed, but you could always install Windows. And if you're interested in building a machine like this, I'll leave all of the links in the description below. But like always, thanks for watching.